Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, always known as Forum BX57, here to bring you on my 1980s G.I. Joe Tour Review. And this week on my second Dreadnought theme month, I'm going to be taking a look at the 1988 Dreadnought Road Pig. Now Road Pig makes his first comic book appearance in the old Marvel comic run of G.I. Joe in issue 83. However, like a lot of 1987 and 1988 characters, he doesn't have any cartoon appearances. However, in the 1992 Deke animated uh, G.I. Joe series, the second version of Road Pig makes his first appearance in the episode The Channel. It's very interesting because that version is just a recolored version of the first version. Now, the one thing I'll point out is on the file card, there's, some, there's uh, quite a few interesting little things on there, such as he has a serial number, which has led some uh, collectors to speculate that he might have originally, sometime in the design process, might have actually been in the army at one point, and maybe either uh, dishonorably discharged or medically discharged. And by medically, I mean that some people have noticed that even though the file card doesn't uh, say anything about this, and even in the cartoon he was just you know, your regular bad guy, uh, sort of a dumb bad guy. But in the comic book, he actually had a, um, a split personality disorder. So that might have been one of the reasons why he might have been kicked out. I don't know, but it's not here in the file card and nobody can confirm why he has a serial number. The other very interesting thing is his place of birth, Go Blue, Michigan. And what's significant about this is it's not a real place, but you could find it on official maps printed in the 1970s. State map maker Peter Fletcher was also a Michigan University football fan and placed two slogans, Go Blue and Beat OSU, for Ohio State University, Michigan's chief rival, on the maps as Easter eggs. While they were removed quickly once found, he did try to play it off as anti-forgery measures. Road Pig comes with the following accessories. This is trademark cinder block hammer, for instance. I used to think that this was kind of a silly weapon, almost cartoony. Uh, a lot of the Dreadnoughts, of course, come with very improvised looking weapons. But when you think about it, a normal cinder block weighs around 12 kilograms, or about, uh, what, 30 pounds? So this is actually kind of a dangerous, uh, a dangerous implement, if you will. He also comes with a spiked battle shield. which just clips onto the wrist. Unfortunately, like a lot of uh, these uh, wrist clip-on weapons for the early G.I. Joes, it's kind of hit or miss because unfortunately uh, Road Pig doesn't have actually um, anything on his wrist to really uh, just sort of solidly lock that in. If you just twist this a little bit, it tends to pop out because it's just so smooth here. The other thing he comes with is his high-powered crossbow. Now I'll put the words high-powered in uh, imaginary quotations. Because this is actually a very small item. Another, uh, another item that clips onto his wrist. Even this, uh, even this little detail on his wrist is really too smooth um, for this thing. And this also tends to pop out very easily. Actually, in the um, in the crossbow itself is a very short bolt, and this uh, this uh, round bit on the end is actually supposed to be a very small grenade. One interesting little thing is that uh, on the side of his leg, they have sculpted some more of these tiny little bolts with grenades on them. And of course, that's a that's a really nice detail. Of course, you do have to understand that the person who's uh, sculpting the figure is not necessarily the person who's sculpting the weapons for the figures back in these days. So it's it's always nice to have some uh, carry through with the designs here. 
And last but not least, giving road pig some impressive bulk is his high intensity impact pads. They're almost like um, football shoulder and chest guards, just sort of bolted together with spikes on one end. Giving them a very almost post-apocalyptic look. Not only do the pads give them that post-apocalyptic look versus more of a biker gang look, he also has that crazy dyed hairdo. I'm assuming the white hair is also dyed, so that's a two-tone dyed hairdo. He also has a little earring there. But more importantly, check out his tattoo. Road Pig is actually a very, uh, very tall, bulky figure. As a matter of fact, if I just uh, bring in the 1986 Monkey Wrench here, you can see that he is quite a bit taller. He's not quite uh, Sergeant Slaughter tall, but he is definitely and noticeably taller. Of course, with the impact pads on, you actually give him quite a bit more bulk than he normally has. It's actually very nice because the 1986 Thrasher also has these type of uh, impact pads on him, but they're sculpted onto him. Because these are a separate piece, it just adds way more weight to the figure. Normally, I don't point out so many things about the file card because I prefer to let the viewer read that themselves. But I find it really odd that this thing just goes on and on and on about how ugly he is. It's almost like the last paragraph was written by Rodney Dangerfield. So what's your opinion? Is Road Pig's face sculpt ugly? To me, it's just kind of chubby, really. Almost smiling. You'd think that they'd give him an angrier, more sneering expression like the one on the card art. In the comic book, Road Pig had romantic feelings towards Zorana, who never reciprocated those feelings. One thing I always felt was very interesting was, a lot of the other Dreadnoughts were not really supposed to accept Road Pig. He was very, uh, very thuggish, very violent, even towards the other Dreadnoughts. I think they even show that at one point in the, in the comic book. But it's only because of his close relationship, and to be quite honest, his close proximity to the then leader of the Dreadnoughts, Zorana, that the other Dreadnoughts can't really kick him out. Road Pig's real name, Donald DeLuca, was in honor of Don DeLuca, head of Hasbro Research and Development, Boys Toys Division. I noted Road Pig's face didn't look terrible as described on the file card, so I thought perhaps it was sculpted after the real person, but it clearly isn't. While Road Pig is a larger than normal action figure, he isn't too large. Sure, in the comics he towers over everyone else, but it's a good thing the figure adds the illusion of bulk instead of actually being big. I found myself scraping the top of Sergeant Slaughter's head trying to get him to sit or stand in enclosed vehicle spaces. I haven't had to worry with that with Road Pig. His flat top haircut also helps. I forgot to mention this, but the additional impact pads don't obstruct the back screw hole, meaning if you want to sit him in a seat which has a back peg, he'll sit just fine with them on. Road Pig is a fairly easy figure to find on the aftermarket complete. He's a sturdy figure and so are his accessories, so you won't often find them broken on the aftermarket. Even paint wear isn't much of a worry, but come on, he's a dreadnought. He should be a little dirty, right? If you want to add just one more Dreadnought to the original Classic 3, I'd recommend Road Pig, especially if you have Zorana. Her shorter figure beside him only emphasizes how big he is, but I always have them together in the 1987 Dreadnought cycle, like reluctant partners. Road Pig needs Zorana to stay in the Dreadnoughts, and Zorana needs Road Pig to deter any challenges to her leadership. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.